Hello everyone. So we have arrived at unit four and the title of this unit four is data processing and analysis. In the last class, we have covered the topics, all the important topics of the unit three. Now, as the title of this unit is data processing and analysis, so we get to know very important information regarding the pre-processing stage of data. Okay, so the first topic is types of data. I hope you can see my screen. Is it visible? Okay, I can see that it is visible. So types of data, you will see that there are mainly two types, either it is qualitative or it is quantitative. Qualitative, we have nominal data and ordinal net data. Look at the examples. Nominal data, we have gender like woman or man, hair color, blondie, brown. Okay, then ethnicity. Okay, Hispanic and Asian. So these are some examples of nominal data. Then we have ordinal data, first, second, third, Later case like A, B, C, then economic status like low, media. These are low, medium. These are the examples of ordinal data. And I know that you already I have discussed these topics in one of my earlier classes, nominal and ordinal. Then quantitative, we have discrete data and continuous data. So in this lecture, as it is in the recording mode, so I'm going to ask a few questions to you and you need to answer the questions by your means mentioning your role number and name in the comment section below from there i will directly go through your answer and accordingly i will mark your attendance okay so quantitative data we have discrete data and continuous data the discrete data like what are the number of students in a class what are the number of workers in the company so that is that, that is discrete right continuous means that, that that is that they are taking the pattern of like this curve. Okay, discrete, you know this, this, then this, then this. There's no continuous, or there is no continuity you know, means among the numbers, right? But then height of a student, then square footage of a two bedrooms house, the speed of the cars, basically this height of children and the speed of the cars, these are, some good examples of continuous data. Okay, so first question of this class is that you are going to tell me few examples for nominal and ordinal and continuous and discrete types of data. Then data analysis basics, like what is editing, coding, classifications. So why we do need, why do we need this analysis portion? Because after collecting the data, it must be reduced to some form suitable for analysis so that the conclusions of findings can be reported to target populations. Okay, from this analysis, you means as a researcher must decide that whether the tabulation of data will be performed by hand or computer, how information can be converted into a form that will allow it to be processed efficiently, means that that particular form should be uh, in a format which can be efficiently processed, then what statistical tools or methods you are going to employ for this analysis? Tax. Okay. Now, the, some techniques are like editing, coding, and classifications are needed for it. Editing means first step, first step in the analysis is just to ready the raw data. So why we perform editing? Because it detects errors or and omissions, and it will help us to correct them up to the extent whatever possible. So as an editor, your responsibility is to guarantee that data are accurate, consistent through the intent of questioner. Questioner, see, you know, in the, uh, the last topics of the unit three is the questioner. So 
today itself, I mean, I would like to tell you as an assignment, you need to carry out that you will create one questionnaire from your side with respect to the school or department you belong. Yeah, and that questionnaire will reflect some research interests uh, that you have chosen for your PhD research. Okay, got my question. So it's now it's all of you will uh, create accordingly one questionnaire. Okay. So um, I hope that uh, by the end of this week, you are going, you will be able to submit that questionnaire and accordingly, what is the analysis you have performed from that? Got it? Don't skip that, all of you will go through it. Okay, you will report that thing to me in the next class. So editing of data may be accomplished in two ways, either field editing and in-house or sometimes also known as central editing. Field editing is preliminary editing of data by a field supervisor or the same data as the interview. Its purpose is to identify some technical omissions, check legibility and clarify responses that are logically and conceptually inconsistent. Got it, this is the field editing. Okay, now when gaps are present, from the interviews, a callback should be made rather than guessing what the respondent would probably say. You are not going to guess those responses. Better, you just need to organize one callback to fill those gaps. Now, supervisor is to re-interview a few respondents, at least on some pre-selected questions as a validity set. In, okay, got it now? This is regarding fill. Editing. Yeah, you are, as a supervisor, supposed to be going through some questions being asked to those, uh, those means selected some uh, group of people. Okay. And with respect to some selected topics. Now, what is the next one, the other one that is in house or in center editing? So, in center or in-house editing of means all the questionnaires undergo through editing. It is a rigorous job that is performed by central office staff. So I hope the field editing and in-house or central editing is not yet. So what is coding? Coding refers to the process of assigning some numerals or other symbols to answers so that responses can be put into a limited number of categories or classes. So you are assigning some numerals or you can say some other symbols so that the responses will be under some limited number of categories of classes. And that is known as coding because you are using that some other numbers or some other symbols, right? Such classes should appropriate to the research problem under consideration. Of course, that is the main goal. And they must also possess the characteristics of Exhaustive snap. Okay. I hope you know that is what does it mean by exhaustive snap? So there must be a class for abrigar item and that of mutually exclusively, which is which means that a specific answer can be placed in one and only one cent in that one given category. Okay, then classification. So coding can be easily done with the pen pencil also. You all know how to do the coding in questionnaire because you have already gone through questionnaire. Okay. Now next is uh, like here I have mentioned that one method is to code in the margin with a colored pencil. The other method can be uh, to transcribe the data from the questionnaire into a coding sheet. Whatever the method is adopted, one should be that coding errors are all together eliminated and reduced to the minimum level. Again, then classification. So classification means this, I think classify means, okay. So, you know, may maximum number of research studies result in a large volume of raw data, what must be reduced to some homogeneous group. We don't need that, that mass of data. We need to uh, put them in some homogeneous group means each group will represent one particular class. 
So the, if you pick from data from that particular group, that will represent one class. Okay, one group. <clears throat> Got my point now. So this fact necessitates the classification of data, which happens to be the process of arranging the data in a group or classes on the basis of some common characteristics. Data having a common characteristics are placed in one class. And similarly, those who are behaving some, well, who are having some different characters, they will be formed, put in other groups. Okay, classification can be one of the two types depending up the, upon the nature of the phenomena involved, like classification according to attributes, you know what is attribute. Okay, that shows some property. Like, you know, these this, this properties you can consider like sex, honesty, literacy, some numerical values have, have many attributes having some numerical values also like height, weight, income, okay. Then classification according to class intervals also you can take that these intervals, like unlike descriptive characteristics, the numerical characteristics refer to quantitative phenomenon which can be measured for some statistical Tunage. You, you already know, suppose uh, we want to classify the whole population in some groups like one to 10 age group, then 10 to 20 age, age groups, 20 to 30 age groups, 30 to 40, like this, some interval, or you can say some class intervals, like, got it? So two types of classification possible, either you are directly working with respect to attributes, you have seen that these are the some descriptive message or descriptive characteristics. And similarly, we have some quantitative characters. So we can say the classification according to class intervals. So next question or second question you can say that you need to answer by comment is that you will tell me what is the difference between classification according to attribute and classification according to class intervals. Then, last topic of today's class is that there are different representation or different graphical representation of the data. Why we need it? Obviously, or it is very obvious that we need a clear presentation of the analysis, right, of the data analysis. So that's why we need different types of graphs. Okay, it exhibits the relations between data, ideas, information, and concepts in a direct term. So it's easy to understand, and it's one of the most important learning strategies, and it always depends on the type of the information in a particular domain. So there may be different types of graphs. We have like line graph, bar graph, histograms, line plot, frequency table, circle graph, stem and leaf, leaf plot, box and whisker plot. Okay, so it means as far as you needed one, you can go through it like line graph, or in, in our case also we prefer this histogram. So let me show you some uh, examples or some the different these different graphs how we represent diagrammatically. Like this is the bar graph you can see. See, this is the bar graph. This is the histogram. Histogram works with respect to some bins and frequency table. Years, daily frequency, and circle graph. I hope you all are very much familiar with this type of graph that this particular portion is representing what percentage of the total population. Okay, suppose this, this yellow is representing, say, those who are taking measures in economics, like that. Okay, then we have line graphs, very simple, one, and then similarly, we have steam. Okay, sorry, steam and leaf plot. Then we have line plot. And this is a very important one that is box and whisker plot. So what you can do as uh, what, whatever your background may be or whatever the area you are doing PhD, your PhD research, you try to relate some, some, some of your data sets that you already have encountered with respect to these different types of graphs. What I mean that try to take some data from that data sets that you have already got or you already have encountered and try to represent them in these different types of graphs, in all these different types of graphs by considering some suitable attributes. So that's it for today. So you have seen some questions I have asked. I'll go through your answers in the comment section and thereby I'll note down your name. And 
I'll mark your attendance. So don't forget to write your name and roll number in while answering the questions. That's it for today. We'll meet in the next class. Thank you. Thank you all.